The supplement industry is over a hundred billion dollars. Last estimates bring it over 180 billion dollars. Today's episode, we're gonna talk about the four supplements everybody should be taking. By the way, most people shouldn't be taking most supplements. <laughs> so that's what you're gonna learn in today's episode. All right, let's talk about everybody always. 180 billion? billion. Is that what you it's said? A big yeah. industry. Yeah. Wow. It's huge. Now I, I wanna say this first. Um, that supplements don't even come close. I, and when I mean close, I mean the difference between a snail and a cheetah, okay? They don't even come close to what proper diet, exercise, sleep, and lifestyle can do for you. Um, it, it, it's not even the same universe. And I want to say that yeah. because we have a warped perception of the value of supplements and what they can do for us. And and I get why, right? Yeah. It's a- That's how it's been marketed to us. It's a big, it's a moneymaker. Yeah. So because it's a moneymaker, it's a consumable product. Um, the Most of the information that's going to be put out by the industry, the fitness industry, is going to be geared towards things that can at least give them some profit. And so we have the disproportionate amount of information that's coming out geared towards supplements yep. versus lifestyle, sleep, and exercise, which are not nearly as profitable. So it creates the illusion that supplements are far more important uh, than they are. I'm so glad you said that, Sal, because it, yeah. you know one of the things that I'm, I'm always trying to um, be cognizant of when we do these episodes, uh, especially one like this, where we're titling the four most valuable supplements, is at all times we have hundreds, if not thousands of first time listeners listening to this one yeah. episode. And I would never want somebody who just found us to think that this is like kind of the way, I mean, we've been presenting for a very long time, the information around what you just said, which is, you know, address diet, address sleep, address programming, address stress. There's so many other factors in your lifestyle that is going to move the needle further and better than any supplement or any combination mm -hmm. of supplements that exists in the world. And so uh, we still stand by that. This is cool because we're going to dive into the supplements a little bit and make the case or argument for why we think these are the four best. But I just want to make that clear that like you, you know, don't take this as like, if this is your first episode listening to the show, like it's not we, magic pills. Yeah. And we've been, and we've been presenting that. This is not us switching sides. Now all of a sudden we're pushing supplements. No. It's, this is, this will be a fun discussion. But at the same time, like you want to check the big boxes or the the rock, the big rocks first, and and then these types of things uh, can add to that. Yeah, right? I, I mean, as a, as a kid growing up, um, <clears throat> as a consumer, uh, big time consumer of the industry, and then somebody who worked in the industry, I believed uh, supplements played a bigger role than they do, and I lost a lot of time uh, and energy uh, moving in that direction or thinking that that would do it for me. I remember, you know, having a conversation with, uh, an ex bodybuilder as a kid, he was a fr family friend and taking him aside and asking him the secrets. Like, how do you, how do you, how did you build so much muscle? And I was a kid, I must've been 15 or 16 years old. And he said, all right, eat a lot of protein, chicken, steak, eggs, fish, lift weights three days a week, full body, get good sleep. And I thought he was lying to me. I thought he, this guy doesn't want to tell me what the real deal is. Now, looking back, he was giving me the best possible advice that I didn't take, right? Yeah. <laughs> because I thought it was something else. And as a kid, man, I had a job uh, really early, right? If, uh, my first job was at 14. So I was making money and I spent my money on supplements, supplement stacks and packs. And I'd read the latest articles and tried everything. And it wasn't until I did the basics that I saw this incredible progress um, in my body. Um, now, supplements are valuable when they're needed. They can be very valuable when needed, but for to be very clear, everything you can get from supplements and everything you can do with supplements, for the most part, you could do with your diet or your lifestyle. So any nutrient or something that you can get or you get from a supplement that does something for you, at least the valuable ones, you can get from your diet. So they're not necessary is, is the do point that I Do you think there's make. probably more of a misconception in terms of how, when somebody just gets started that they need these supplements yeah. to go alongside that versus somebody who is just impatient and, and, you know, they've been going through the process. They don't realize that consistency really is, you know, that biggest factor that they're lacking. I think the first one that you said, Justin, yeah. I think there's a major misconception. At least this has been my experience. I'm thinking back to conversations I've had recently with family members that are getting ready to get started. And they always ask like, well, what supplements should I be yeah, taking? Yeah. And I think that that goes to the point that Sal made, which is because this is a $180 billion industry, 
unfortunately, so much of the conversation that's being had in our space is geared around the arguments of what supplement is yep, better yeah. or, you know, yeah. so I, I think that a lot of people hear that noise and then they're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do important. Uh, yeah, yep. it's imp I'm going to do this thing now. These products tell, tell me, give me the list of things I need mm -hmm. to get in order to do that. And so I think that, and you know, when I think about it, it uh, I, I like to use like an analogy, like around like a, like a, like a race team. Cause this is get like supplements is getting really granular to me. And if, if you're familiar with like, man, the professional level of like race cars is crazy. Like the, they are measuring the amount of downforce that's getting put on a car. They're, they are measuring how the, the amount of uh, air that's going through the they're intake. measuring the is, weight of the car down to like a half a pound. To, yeah, they're, yeah. They're measuring the uh, tire pressure in uh, each car and, and like, pressure, yeah, yeah, I mean, it is like, and it, and and they're tweaking all that to get a, a you know a half a second you know faster lap or less you know and so you know that's how I think of like you're tweaking the body with supplements by ooh making sure you're getting this this creatine or this supplement or this multivitamin or this what this performance like supplement like you're you're doing that and it's like it's not that they don't work it's just that you're getting so granular but then you're sleeping four hours. Yeah. So that's like literally like the race car. It's like, imagine a uh, Red Bull comes out with their Indy car and they get ready to start the race and then the front left tire is flat. Yeah. <laughs> but or they got everything engine. else, but they got yeah. everything else all dialed in. It's super like, fine tuned. Yeah. yeah but, they, they find they're and they're arguing over, you know, the downforce or something like that. It's like, you know, you have a flat tire, right? Yeah. Like if you just fix that, you're going to have a better chance of winning this race right. than you arguing over the downforce right. or the fuel, whatever, you know? So like, totally. that's kind of how I, totally. I look at supplements. Now that being said, there are some supplements that have some value. Um, and a lot of the value comes from the fact that they may be filling a nutrient uh, that you are a nutrient need that you might not be filling with your diet, in which case it makes a big difference, or they help you with your workouts or they help you with, the things that make the big uh, the big differences in how your body looks and feels in your athletic performance. Today's giveaway on YouTube. Ready for this? Maps Strong. To get that program, to potentially win that program, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Now, this episode is brought to you by a sponsor, Legion. Speaking of supplements, they make some of the best high performance, muscle building, fat burning, sleep uh, encouraging supplements you'll find anywhere. We know the owner very well. This is a company that has great authenticity, uh, third party testing. It's great stuff. Go check them out. They have lots of different products for different goals. Go to buylegion.com. That's B-U-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Get 20% off your first order. And if you're a returning customer, you'll get double rewards points. We also have a sale this month. MAPS split is half off, and the Sexy Athlete Bundle of Workout Programs is also half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. So the first supplement is just the multivitamin. That's not a sexy supplement. They have the lowest margins, I think, some of the lowest margins in supplement sales. But the reason why a multivitamin can be valuable is if you are lacking a key nutrient, your body can't function properly, right? So if you're deficient in calcium or vitamin D or magnesium or vitamin C or one of these essential mm -hmm. micronutrients, then the, the, the biochemical processes of the body can't happen the way they're supposed to. And you are not either functioning optimally or in bad cases, you actually develop disease as a result of it. And nutrient deficiencies can cause disease. If you're too low in iron, you'll have this terrible fatigue and a blood test will show that you're anemic. If your vitamin C is too low, then your blood vessels get weak and you'll bruise and bleed through your gums and all kinds of weird stuff can happen. Um, and a vitamin C supplement can cure you, right? Low vitamin D can cause it's brittle bones. At and the, pain. the worst part. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so a multivitamin, what a multivitamin does is it, it, it kind of fills nutrient gaps. Now there's a lot of studies on multivitamins and they're kind of mixed, but for the most part, what you find is people who take a multivitamin are less likely, obviously, to suffer from a nutrient deficiency. And in older populations, it's shown to slow decline in, uh, in, in brain function, probably because of the fact that they're not lacking uh, particular nutrients. I'm glad you picked this as the first one because this is one of the supplements I've changed my opinion on. Um, 
early on as a young trainer, I would have kind of poo-pooed the multivitamin. Yeah, same. From, for a combination of reasons. One, because of how we started this, saying that supplements barely move the needle as it is. Mm -hmm. And then I would make the case of like, in a multivitamin, is come on, like you're not going to see a major performance difference. And so I would have made this argument in case that like, of all the different supplements that are out there, this is not going to move the needle very much. But my ch my philosophy has changed on that for the reasons that you just brought up is that almost everybody is lacking somewhere. Like I, I, I have yet to have a client that they did a full blood panel, came mm -hmm. back and found out that, oh, we weren't low on vitamin C yeah. or magnesium or vitamin D, which, you know, 65% of the population is low on, on vitamin D. Like these are all magnesiums up it's there also. Has another comment. Yeah. There are, I mean, you're talking about more than half the people without me even knowing through a test, there's so 50, 50 chance you're low on that. So and I, and what I have learned over all these years of training people is like, man, if we, if we don't, if the body isn't healthy, it's really hard to optimize. It's really hard to gain extra pounds of muscle or shred extra pounds of body fat, you know, get the body to work for you when you're not giving it the, the bare bones things that it needs and wants. Cause then it looks like a check engine light is on. It's yeah. going, there's something not right. We're not balanced. And, we're not getting enough. And so it's always important to address yeah, that. And first. oftentimes people will identify a nutrient deficiency when it gets so bad yeah, that, it's screaming that they start you. to present yeah. uh, disease, chronic disease, yeah. right? Like, like, you know, bone weakness or hormone um, issues or, or depression. And then, you know, you, through a bunch of testing, oh, my vitamin D is low, right? Right. But there is an optimal level of nutrients. And then there's a suboptimal level, which won't <laughs> present itself as disease. It's just suboptimal, right? So you can be within a range, but you'd be better off if the levels will higher uh, versus I'm outside of range below that range. And now I'm starting to present myself. With yeah. Disease. And this just kind of covers the bases, yes. you know, at that point. So it's, it's expensive to go get testing and, you know, really fine tune, like exactly. Cause sometimes it's pretty elusive. Like it, you don't really know like what, no. you know, that, that micronutrient or that nutrient deficiency might be. Uh, and so to be able to kind of do this in a preventative way, uh, you know, makes sense to me. And two, I mean, you're going to piss out if you're overdoing it to, to some of them, you can build up a lot, but a good multivitamin isn't going to put dangerous doses of yeah, put uh, dangerous of, doses. Yeah. So, you know, like an example, my father, he was experiencing lots of kind of pain, back pain and stuff. And he was just like, Oh, I'm older. I've got arthritis. It must be that. And they tested his vitamin D and it was, it was really low. Yeah. Started taking vitamin D and it cured his pain because right. that's you really feel the difference. Yeah. Magnesium is another common one where someone's like, you know, I, I just don't sleep well. I'm kind of anxious, you know, kind of like these subtle signs. Then they take a magnesium supplement before bed and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God. I, I mean, that was life changing so well. for me. Right. I mean, you've heard me, I mean, I've been pushing the Ned product for so long, not because Ned is so magical, more so because I had no idea I was lacking in, in that in magnesium that bad that it like was an instant. Oh my God. Once I started addressing that, yep. my sleep was in, was in yeah, dramatic an improvement. And yeah. that, see, and to me, because we do talk about the power of sleep. That's what I'm saying. And how much now that's a big better. rock. Right. And so if you can tell me that this cheap supplement, like a multivitamin may feel a gap in something that could impact that. That's right. Now you're talking about- That's my point. Very, very yeah. valuable. That's right. So that's a, that's a huge difference. And so that's where a lot of my philosophy has changed around the multivitamin because of those exact reasons. Right. Next up is a protein powder. Now, there's nothing magical about a protein powder. There's nothing special- about the protein uh, that's in the protein powder, but rather this helps you hit a high protein diet because to hit a high protein diet, to eat the amount of protein that you find that benefits you in studies, regardless of your goal. So whether your goal is fat loss, muscle gain, athletic performance, high protein, about 0.6 to one gram of protein per pound of let's say target body weight. Okay, so that's high. So that means if you're a 130 pound person, about 100 grams to 130 grams, okay? Most people have a tough time hitting this number on a consistent basis. Now, you might be watching this and listening and go, no, I can do that. I like meat. Try it. Try it. Eight out of 10 people that I've worked with have trouble consistently hitting those types of numbers for protein because it's it's so satiating. It requires more preparation. It's, you know, eight ounces of meat, you know, three times a day or whatever. A lot of people just, th they and they think high protein when they eat three slices of cheese or two eggs, when it's like that doesn't even come close to what high protein is. A protein powder is just convenient. And what it does is it allows you to hit those targets, those numbers, which again, in studies have been sh have shown quite consistently, whether you want to lose fat, improve <laughs> athletic performance, or build muscle, regardless, 
a high protein diet for the vast majority of people uh, is beneficial. Well, and this and this uh, supplement kind of falls in line. Sim the similar conversation is the multivitamin is. I, I would say north of 80%, maybe 90% of every single client I've ever trained- Doesn't eat that mouth. Doesn't eat yeah. enough of the protein. It's right. almost always the very first thing that I adjust in somebody's diet before I tell them, don't eat this or do this. It's almost always, we need to bump your protein intake. Now, the way I talk about it is, hey, I would like to see you get this all from Whole Foods. I would love to see you eat, yeah. you know- four meals with a steak or chicken breast in it. The reality of that is that most people have a really hard time eating that much protein. Which is why a high protein diet is also great for fat loss. Exactly. Right? It makes yep. you eat less. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm always going to encourage them in that direction, but I definitely want to make sure that we have a protein shake for those days that you can't do that. That's how I like mm -hmm. to use and, it as insurance. At the yeah, end of the yeah. day, oops, I missed by 40 grams. Boom, easy shake. And that's why this becomes a for sure top four for me supplements that you you should have in your, because I don't care how good you are. I consider myself a very high protein, high steak, high meat eater, but I still go through these bouts of like, oh my God, that was a yep. really low day. All it takes, all you need is one of your breakfasts, either you skipped your breakfast or it was a, a muffin or a carb heavy type of breakfast. And now you're behind the eight ball and hitting your protein targets for the day becomes very difficult totally. and how nice it is to have that shake and what what hitting your protein intake does for building muscle building the metabolism ultimately helping you shred body fat trumps a lot of other things so even though indirectly the protein shake isn't doing anything magical it, what it is doing in order to hit your protein intake consistently that will feel magical yeah. because if you do that consistently Paired with good strength training, it will change your physique. Absolutely. Uh, all right, next up, um, electrolytes. Now, I do want to be clear who I think this will benefit. If you eat a diet that is high in, in processed foods, you don't need to take electrolytes. Your sodium is high enough. You might benefit from a little bit of potassium and magnesium, but uh, there's not enough in electrolyte powders of those that make a big difference. Really, it's the sodium and electrolyte powders that makes the big difference. And if you eat a heavy processed food diet, you got plenty of sodium. These, this supplement is important for people who eat a diet that is almost entirely whole foods or, and, or a low carb diet. When you eat a whole food diet, mm -hmm. these are foods that you prepare yourself. You make your own steak and chicken. You make your own rice. You make your own vegetables. You eat fruits. You eat nuts. Your sodium intake, and you work out, right? Your electrolyte levels are low. Your sodium is low mm -hmm. and you need electrolytes to perform your best. In fact, most of the time, people who eat a whole food-based diet, unless other uh, unless they're otherwise recommended by their doctor, right? It, when they add electrolytes, get improvements in performance, and they feel yeah. better. The intramuscular hydration—it's it's something that I, I always scoffed at, like the electrolyte yeah. uh, supplement category in general. Other than I looked at it as an athlete, like when I needed it the most was like these days of humidity and heat. Uh, and you know, where I was sweating a lot, uh, in general, is like the only value I saw with that, but, uh, never even considered the fact that like having a low carb, um, or whole foods based diet, like how much of an impact that would make, uh, performance wise and feel the energy difference with that. Because this is also too, one of those things, some people have gone through carnivore diet or they've tried these like, uh, uh, ketogenic diets and they found, you know, oh my God, I bonk and I don't have any of that like energy. And I, I feel like garbage, almost like flu-like symptoms. And it's like, you know, if you, if you can maintain, uh, you know, a good amount of sodium to kind of, uh, you know, keep, keep all that at bay, like it makes a huge well, that's, difference. That's what, that's what it is. Yeah. It's, the, it's the fact that when you go low carb or keto or carnivore, your body gets rid of a lot of water and you lose a lot yeah. of electrolytes. Yeah. If you're on a low carb diet, if you were working with me as a client and you're on a low carb or, or carnivore diet or keto diet, like doubling it electrolytes up. is a must. And double. It is absolute must. Yeah. They blamed keto flu, what you're talking about, on the low carb. Oh, your body's just transitioning. Yes, I've from, always heard. Yeah. Yeah, it's transitioning from carbs to fats. No, no, no. Your electrolytes are off and you feel like garbage. And here's how you know. You'll drink, you know. And you'll uh, feel it right away. You'll feel it 10 minutes later. Yeah. Whoa, what's going on? My flu is gone. I, I mean, I love that you picked two supplements. I Obviously, I didn't see when you first started to put this episode together. And you picked two supplements that I've completely changed my tune on. Same. And yeah. so I love that you did that instead of like some of the obvious ones that are probably out there that we've agreed upon forever. So I like that because it creates a good discussion around that because this is something 
maybe just six, seven years ago, I would have shit all over. hundred <laughs> percent. I, I really was. So it's a, I'm pretty I think sure it's a good, we did when we first came No, out. it is. It's a, it's a really good conversation. And you know, it's one of the, it's probably the last, the last supplement epiphany I had. I'm trying to think if there's been something more recent than that. Uh, maybe if you, if you put my epiphany around peptides, that one was a, a big yeah, opener for me. that's not a supplement. But it's not like yeah. a supplement like this, right? So I would say maybe electrolytes, like adaptogens, but yeah. I would say electrolytes was, even adaptogens, we started talking about stuff like that even before. You think Trend, really, it's not going to be ahead of anything. It's not yeah. huge, yeah. And and I on that really blew my mind. And it really and and I guess part of it was because I have always salted my food up. Yeah. And I you know I I would suffer from headaches every once in a while, not knowing why it was, I, thinking that I was totally fine. Oh, my diet's good. I was strange. I have this headache, and realizing that I was just I was under I was not hydrated. I wasn't getting enough sodium, and even though I was salting my foods. Um, I didn't realize how low it was because I was just coming from a processed type of diet and then going over there. And I think that's the part too that's important to, I know you said it, but to reiterate how important this is, this becomes really important when you take a client on who is used to eating a very high processed eating out type of diet and then you shift them into a whole food type they of just, diet. They just cut their sodium <coughs> down by a third, by, so, down to a third of what it was. That's it right. Was, so you got to understand the way the body shift. adapts. This is what makes our body so amazing. If they've been eating that, their body is adapted to that number. You know, they say we've been eating that for years. It is now used to these high, high levels of processed foods and sodiums, and it'll do what it needs to do to, to adjust and adapt to that. And then if you go all the way to a whole food diet, even if you salt the shit out of every whole, whole, meal, whole food meal you have, it is nowhere near even close to what oh. one or two meals eating out is like. And so that shift, that dramatic shift in someone could cause a lot of Listen, these things we're talking about. Low eat, energy, headaches. Totally. The bad pumps, <clears throat> poor sleep. You yep. know, all that Look, if you ate French fries from McDonald's or you made French fries at home yourself and salted them, even if they tasted similar in terms of saltiness, it's less sodium. Yeah, a lot less. That's how much sodium is in processed foods. But if you work out and you sweat, especially if you have a job that where you sweat a lot, but if you work out and you eat a whole food diet or a low-carb diet, electrolytes will probably be a, a game changer for you. All right, last is what I like to call the king of all supplements, okay? This is not a, although I can make the argument it's essential, but your body can make this from certain amino acids, so it's not like you have to take this type of deal. But this is the one supplement where, where if you want to burn fat, if you want to build muscle, if you want to improve cognitive function, if you want to live longer, if you want better organ function, if you want better bone density, I mean, I can go down the list. This is the king of all supplements. It is probably, if not the best wellness and performance and muscle building supplement that there is in all those categories, and that's creatine. Creatine uh, is also simultaneously one of the most studied. There's literally over a thousand or more, probably probably in the thousands of peer-reviewed studies, placebo-controlled studies on creatine. And when it first came out, it was a great muscle building supplement and performance. Why? Because you take creatine and you get stronger and then you build more muscle. And then everybody was like, uh oh, it's performance enhancing. It must be bad for you. So they did right. tons of study. No, not only is it not bad for you, it's good for you. Not only is it good for you, but it's probably going to contribute to longevity. And now you see all these longevity experts talking about how creatine is a great supplement to take. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> certain, some nursing homes are now giving this to uh, their aging population. Because they're no, because of the benefits to for dementia, cognitive benefits. Yeah, they're antidepressant. Uh, creatine's got antidepressant uh, benefits, anti anxiety benefits. Mm -hmm. Now, what is creatine? For people who don't know, creatine. Your body takes creatine and uses it to make more ATP. ATP. ATP is a type of energy that every single cell in your body uses, and the capacity for them to store more ATP is so much higher than what we typically have. So when you increase the amount of energy that these cells can use, they function better. Now for strength, that means most people, if you just start tucking, taking creatine, within a week or two, you can expect to add about five pounds or two reps to every lift. That's, that's basically the number most people will see, purely from the creatine itself. You will gain a little bit of weight on the scale. I wanna correct the myth right now. First off, it is water weight. Second, it is not bloat. So this is where people get freaked out. This is, and I hate this because Women have been the most afraid to take It's a creatine. big barrier to it, yeah. But but this is not bloat. Ladies, it's not the same thing as Water being Water weight in the muscle. This means your muscles Look are better, rounder, more shapely. fuller, more shapely. Your butt feels tighter. All your muscles feel more, quote unquote, toned yeah. or sculpted because they're more hydrated. So you've gained a couple pounds of hydration. 
not bloat. Bloat is under the skin. It's what makes you look smooth and puffy. Creatine doesn't do that. It doesn't make you puffy. It makes your muscles tighter and fuller because now they're able to hold a little bit more water. This also helps with muscle building, which then indirectly helps with fat loss. And yes, creatine indirectly is also a great fat loss supplement. My favorite part about talking about this is not the aha for people, because I'm pretty sure if we took a, a big vote on what supplements on here, this would probably be on almost everybody's mm -hmm. list, I would guess, especially as much as we talk about. My favorite part about talking is is honestly to give you your flowers, Sal, is because if, you, if you've been listening long enough and you go all the way back to the very beginning of this podcast when we first started, you had been predicting this for a long time yeah. that yeah. creatine is going to make it's, its way a wellness into the well, product. right? It's been, it's been known for a long time on the performance athletes, strength athletes, uh, as the go-to supplement to take that every, every athlete takes. Um, and we've known that for a really long time. There's thousands of studies to support and back all these great benefits, but what you were reading and what you were most interested in when all the new stuff that was coming out, around all these other benefits that were more for longevity and health and bone density and, and muscle mass as you age and a uh, cognitive benefits. And you were like, this is going to be something that we're not, we're, we're going to give your grandma. We're probably going to give your kids mm -hmm. that we're going to start giving to everybody like a multivitamin. And we're starting to see it now. We're starting to see multivitamins adding creatine. You're starting to see protein powders adding creatine. And you're starting to hear the communication on in the, uh, on the hippie crunchy side of the space talking about creatine. And so the, my favorite part about talking about this, because I don't think it's wowing anybody that creatine's on this is that if you don't know it, you've been calling this or Sal's been calling this for almost 10 years now that we'd be here. And it feels like, at least to me, feels like we're starting to arrive yes. there where it's becoming way more popular There's for very, everybody to take. Very few supplements that you can say are an, a, a great and ultimate performance boosting, muscle building, and longevity boosting supplement. Usually there's a little bit of a trade here or there with that. But and by the way, when it comes to building muscle and strength and performance, creatine is the most guaranteed to work for you. There's no supplement that is as consistent as creatine. So it, it, so in other words, if you're watching this and listening to this, uh, you should be taking creatine for sure. And, or the other supplements that we mentioned, that's why we gave you those four. Now the other ones are more like insurance, uh, but uh, like protein powder, just in case you don't eat enough protein, multivitamin, just in case you don't hit your nutrients, electrolytes. Well, if you eat a whole foods diet, probably a good idea, but creatine is the one that everybody could take and will benefit from. Look, if you love the show, check out our how to squat like a pro guide. It's a guide that teaches you how to squat perfectly so you can develop an incredible lower body. Uh, you can find that at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano and Adam's at mindpumpadam. Adam. 